to have so many of you with us at this year's Euro Project Conference. With over 4,000 participants online, this year's virtual conference has become a truly global gathering space for those committed to disability inclusion. With so many participants from all over the world, it is easy to, easy to forget to mention the backbone of global gatherings like these, namely trusted partner organizations such as Architects for Accessibility. So thank you to Architects for Accessibility for organizing this valuable partner channel session. Therefore, without further ado, I wish you all well and look forward to seeing you online and in the conference platform. Over to you, Access for Accessibility, Architects for Accessibility. Uh, all right, uh, thank you, Sir Raza. So let me just say hi to everyone. Um, I'm Architect Karasi Andregania, and I'm one of the officers of the Architects for Accessibility, and I will be with you for today. So uh, first, uh, I'd like to thank and welcome all of the attendees to our program at the Zero Project Conference. So thank you and salamat. And uh, now to start off, uh, let me introduce you to our speaker for today. So she is a member, advocate of the Architects for Accessibility, also known as the AFA, a subgroup of the United Architects of the Philippines or UAP QC Center. Um, where she currently serves as secretary. She graduated Bachelor of Science in the Architect in, in the, she graduated uh, Bachelor of Science in Architecture from the University of Santo Tomas at Manila in 2012 and obtained her license as Filipino architect in 2015. By profession, she has experience working in small private construction companies, handling project management and administrative works. She obtained her master's degree in development management from the Asian Institute Management in 2020. So without further ado, let us all welcome architect Abigail Ko. Architect. Good day, everyone. So thank you, Resi, for that kind introduction. I am representing Architects for Accessibility from the Philippines. Our topic is mental health balance in ICT employment. Again, I would like to thank Zero Project Conference team for this opportunity and the support they gave in helping us prepare for this occasion. I thank our team from Architects for Accessibility for their enthusiasm and support in this activity. To all supporters of Architects for Accessibility, thank you for sticking with us. Mabuhay! Let me just share my screen. So I'd like to introduce to you Architects for Accessibility, which started in 2016, a subgroup and affiliate of the United Architects of the Philippines or UAP QC Central Chapter, which aims to promote the rights of persons with disabilities or PWDs through information campaign and awareness program. The United Architects of the Philippines or UAP is the professional organization in the Philippines where one becomes, or when one becomes a licensed Filipino architect. I am very thankful to have been a witness to its development and vote for UAP and AFA since my engagement in the organization around 2015, 2016. We are very honored and happy to participate and be in this conference this year. So this is one of our photo and the group.
Hold on. All right. Uh, I think uh, there's. Uh, there, I think uh, our architect Abby, are you having any problems? We will wait for you. If hold on. All right. Okay. Okay, and we're back. So just to have a disclaimer, this information made by Architects for Accessibility is for educational purpose only, as well as to give in general information and understanding of the industry. It is not intended to provide specific legal or professional advice. And the information here should not be a substitute for competent and legal advice from a licensed architect. And that includes in your state. So I'd like to start with the game, The Sims. My life during childhood was just home and school. As a lifestyle, we rarely go out and travel unless it is an activity mandated by the school or work company. In that sense, I kept myself preoccupied and entertained at home by playing video games on the computer and watching local television. I enjoyed playing The Sims, which was first released in year 2000, which was 20 years ago. And then the game is up about a player. And then you take a role as a Sim or the human in the game and put on commands how the Sim will live. The Sim will eat, sleep, and socialize with neighbors and other features emulating human interaction. I find the features to build a house also interesting. In 2014, they released The Sims 4, focus on emotions. So are you curious now what it looks like? Okay, so this is the interface of The Sims 4 game. Disclaimer, I'm not, uh, I'm not affiliated with the company, but I just this is my inspiration. On the right side, you can see the needs bar of a sim. The needs like hunger, fun, energy, deplete on a regular basis and must be replenished regularly. If the needs are low, it affects the mood or emotion of the sim showed on the left side. So you can see the face on the left side. Aside from the personal needs, the environmental factors also affect the mood and emotion of the sims. For instance, a sim will react and get angry to unpleasant, dirty surroundings. An icon will appear with the number of hours and will be, it will be angry on that matter. So on the right is the, is the needs and on the left is the emotion moodlet. And then it generates this unpleasant surrounding moodlet. 
This is interesting for me. As the game places values from environmental variables that affect the sim mood or emotion. On the internet, there is a whole guide for the game made by the fans. As an example, this unpleasant surrounding moodlet falls under the category of environment. So, as you can see on the right, there is a whole wiki about the game. The moodlet is the unpleasant surrounding. And you can see on the left side is the word angry. It is the emotion. So it's distinguish the, the emotion and the moodlet. On the online guide, I was very amazed because there are 80 moodlet for the category of environment. So if you look at this on a bigger uh, or a zoom version, Look at the first row. This decorated moodlet is triggered by hanging decorations in the same home contributing to a happy moodlet for two hours. Also, it gets very detailed as it separates unpleasant surrounding, bad surroundings to filthy surroundings with different values. As you can see in the effect column, there's one, two, three. This gives us an impression that emotions are measurable, if not predictable with variables. I wonder, did you find that interesting too? This is what my, one of my inspiration for the topic that I will share today. Mental health balance in ICT employment. Presented by Architects for Accessibility for, for the Philippines. So our topic in mental health balance, we explore how we can contribute as architects for accessibility to improve mental health balance in ICT employment and make ICT employment more accessible. With the fundamental hypothesis, this is how we started. If we improve the workspace, we improve the mental health, assuming they are directly proportional. The scope and limitation of this topic is spatial organization from a work from hope setup in ICT employment with mental health balance as a design consideration. Note that this does not focus on accessibility features of digital tools you see on the computers like caption, magnifier, and text narrator. In summary, we use this framework. We want to explore the level of accessibility in ICT employment through workspace design, considering mental health. The discussion I will present follows this framework as a guide. Looking at the top from ICT employment to mental health, to workspace quality, to workspace configuration and audit form on which we cite there the features and the criteria for assessment. To give you um, foundation to understand where, where, where we're coming from, here is a list of review of related literature. In 2014, the Philippine National Council on Disability Affairs or NCDA released a document on work at home entrepreneurship Practical Guide for Filipinos with Disabilities. In this document, there were 24 job types listed under the Information, Communication, and Technology, or ICT, which includes YouTube artists, customer service, medical transcriptionist, data encoder, marketing and sales support, presentation designer, call center agent, graphic designer, content editor, web designer, and label and package designer. I hope it rings a bell that you are familiar with this profession. And in that book, more than 150 jobs types enlisted under writing and translation separate from ICT employment. Others are sales and marketing, administrative support, engineering and manufacturing, finance and management, and legal category. ICT 
ICT employment was promoted in the Philippines for persons with disabilities, allowing them to work anywhere. There were also similar programs that benefit and research and reach women who stay in the household as a social norm in our country. Aside from the social norm, there are also concerns that mothers need to stay at home, so this benefited them as well. For those who are having difficulty traveling due to mobility issue, ICT employment has been of a great help. ICT employment not only reach households and provide employment, but also skills learned to help a person connect on a global level thanks to the technology. Personally, this is comforting for me on the aspect that I am poor with travel directions and struggle to work in places that require long travel. So I have this tendency to have fears and anxious on the, and become anxious on these occasions. Moving on, to give a background, we want to understand what is health and where mental health is coming from. I am not a medical and health professional, but this helped me understand from my perspective with background as an architect. First, we understand about health and look at the World Health Organization definition of health. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease of infirmity. In our household, we have a certain several level of self-awareness about physical health. Symptoms like physical pain, cough, colds, or headaches tell us that our health usually needs attention and adjustment, if not treatment. Usually, this is on the physical matter in our household and community. How about you? Do you think that, uh, what do you think about when you have cough and headache? Do you seek treatment or biomedicine? I wonder if we could learn from this in understanding the two other aspects of well-being, which is mental and social well-being. In the Philippines, the policy pushing for national regulation of mental health was referenced from Republic Act Number 11036 or the Philippine Mental Health Act of 2017, which is, if you look at it, still pretty much recent. In 2020, they leveraged it. The Philippines pushed the implementation of Mental Health Act in the workplace and deemed it as very, very important. While not directly a measurement of mental health, there's something I want to share, which is this scale by Dr. David Hawkins on the levels of consciousness. It is very similar to the concept of Sims video games that I shared a while ago on measuring moods and emotion. The same feature a while ago had a happy and angry emotion. If we, want, if we are to look at this chart as a regular citizen, and for me, and as an architect, I can understand this chart by looking at where the emotion lies in the scale. For example, happiness or ha being happy is closest to joy. So you can see on the upper left is a joy and at scale 540. The highest is peace at 600. For the angry emotion, we look at the lower portion, which is 150. In this context, we can, we can infer that or we can interpret that to for the angry emotion to reach the joy emotion, you just need to add 450 on the scale. If one has joy at four, 540 at the scale, one has just to add 60 and then it reaches the emotion of peace or level of consciousness in this context. They have also uh, they have also other uh, interpretations. For example, in joy, it connotes to extraordinary or extraordinary outcomes. So, I wonder if you yourself 
got curious and look at the scale and how you are feeling today. Many of us in this pandemic had this some kind of fear. So if you see on the scale, fear is at the bottom at 100 and labeled as a negative emotion. Moving on, there's another literature that I found interesting and similar, also easy to comprehend. It is not mainly about health, but more on the culture. On the right is the book Up the Mood Elevator by Larry Sen. The author has a framework for emotion called the mood elevator. It's the highest emotion is grateful and the lowest is depressed. So how do we relate this to a workspace design? So we review the environmental comfort model of workspace quality by Visser in 2008. In the study done in 2008, comfort is defined in four levels, discomfort, physical comfort, functional comfort, and at the top is psychological comfort. Between discomfort and physical comfort is the habitability threshold. In this pandemic, it is very timely to talk about mental health in employment. As there were articles about working remotely during COVID and concerns about mental health and well-being. So now we are discussing the workspace design. How do we configure it? So we review the basics of workstation, workstation design for ICT employment through basic office ergonomics. Office Ergonomics or ergonomics concerns human interaction in relation to system performance and improving human well-being. It falls under a psychology topic from the Greek word ergon meaning work or labor plus nomos meaning natural loss. In the photos, as you can see, the relation of the eyes and the screen is measured with a specific angle, including the angles of the arms, legs, and thigh posture. While some homes have little space to adapt a work from home, other homes are on the opposite side of the spectrum with too much things that clutter to the inconvenience of the household members. So have you heard of Netflix tidying up with Marie Kondo? It has been good business for other parts of the world with associations for certified professional organizers trying to address the clutter issues. In the Philippines, it is still a profession little known to the public. Perhaps in pop culture, you've heard of the tidying up with Marie Kondo, which is more popularly known in Asia, where the host who fe was featured in the show is a Japanese citizen. There were parts in the series featuring clients' moods changing towards the positive after the organization activities. In other countries, the work of professional certified organizers ranges from residential specialists to hoarding specialists and those with special needs, special needs clients like ADHD or attention deficit or hyperactivity disorder or traumatic cases. If you remember the scale a while ago about the levels of consciousness by Dr. Hawkins, we can associate hyperactivity and ADHD and think about the chart a while ago. I remember it's under the negative emotion. So things, we realize that things, a lot of things are related with the environment and our mental health. But for the purpose of this conference, our position representing architects for accessibility, we narrow down the scope to the framework we've explored in the next slide, the audit framework. In order to assess the level of access accessibility, we explore a framework to audit a workstation. This will help us establish a baseline. This reference used in this framework are standards for non office work, space design, accessibility law, and remote work. Think about it when you want to cook 
for the first time. And there are a lot of things to think about. The ingredients, the appliances, the time, the, the time to cook and the temperature to cook. How do you frame all of these items? Is it a checklist? A recipe that looks like a checklist. How has this helped you focus in cooking? Did it give you a peace of mind? Or did it made you anxious? Does it help you not to overthink and just trust the process in the list? So this is where I'm coming from. We have presented this checklist and audit form for the levels of accessibility in ICT employment through workspace design. The form is divided into five simple but main parts. One is the basic information at the top, which is the date and address. Number two, the checklist containing the scope or features, the criteria for assessment, equivalent points per criteria, and space or a column for scoring. Number three is the recommendation, which are to reconfigure or to add the list or to add the list that is uh, for the feature of the workstation. Number four is rating. What does these numbers mean? So rating of the total score garnered with stars, one star as the lowest and five stars as the highest. This helped gauge the level of workspace quality using the criteria listed. A five star means a very accessible workspace for ICT employment, not necessarily because the workstation is the state of the art quality, but it is functional enough for substantial mental health in ICT employment. And finally, at the bottom, the space for auditors to credit their work. Auditors in this uh, form is envisioned not necessarily to be or need to be an architect, but anyone who completed the training for this audit form. We follow a three-step flow of the audit, mainly the surfaces, which is the chairs and the tables, the work tools, the computers, and the environment like lighting and temperature. What does the auditor do? To measure, to check the checklist, and take photos for documentation. Although the auditor can be two person, one is measuring and the other is just recording on the recording words and points and occasionally the photos. What are the tools that you will use? Very simple, still measure tape, the audit form, of course a pen, a camera or a phone camera, and internet, internet connection because you will use some apps to test uh, some speed like the internet or some apps to check the lighting or the noise. So here we are, the most awaited portion, the checklist. So here on the left side is a checklist and I shall run you through very quickly on to gain an understanding in a very simple way. So for the surfaces, we have the chair, at least a 0.43 meter diameter chair using a steel meter tape. Next is the desk, a dedicated desk with one or one by 1.5 meter as dimension. Ideally, it serves on, main, on its main purpose, which is for ICT employment, and does not serve other purpose like dining. To minimize the clutter, a storage at least the size fitting a regular A4 size paper. Usually, this is the drawer just above the knees or below the surface of the table. So and a dimension suggested is 0.3 by 0.25 by 0.1 tent width height. So this can fit uh, your ruler, your stationery, your paper. 
Of course, we also want to minimize more clutter by adding a trash can for office. A trash can for office is 7 to 10 gallons, but how do you measure 7 to 10 gallons? So you use the formula below, length times width times height in inches and divided by the factor 231 and you get the gallon. So in this activity, you also use the steel measure tape. For the floor, we, we are thinking about offering this for basically for someone in a wheelchair. So ideally that person can move around freely. So I clear the diameter of 1.5 meter allowance to maneuver and rotate in front of the desk. For the immediate corridors, we can go with 1.2 meter clear width, but if the wheelchair person want to turn about, you can use, or it is suggested to have 1.5 meter clear width. So here are the work tools. We have the computer or laptop. We have the internet connection. So you can use uh, speed test by Ukla or equivalent. It's free on the internet. So you look, at least it could, it is a uh, 5 Mbps speed, upload speed for ICT employment or the basic administrative work and headset and webcam. So at least it is functional and the smartphone or tablet. For the environment, we refer to the office setup, which is uh, 300 to 500 looks. In this uh, section, the lighting intensity can vary depending on the location of the fixtures type. So this photo is just for representation. It can be a ceiling light, table lamp, black lighting, or wall lighting. It is important that glare is also considered. So there, there should be minimal glare. So have you thought about your workspace now? What kind of lighting you have? Of course, see for the electricity or power cord, at least it is not cluttered and organized. So we have a lot of devices right now for ICT. So next is the ventilation. At least there is a window, air conditioning, air conditioner and fan. A comfortable temperature, which is 22 degrees or to 28 degrees. Actually, it depends on the person's tolerance and the number of devices that affect the heat in this space. Of course, we don't want it too cold or too hot. An average noise is around 30 decibels. We don't want a noisy from 30 to 80 decibels. 80 decibels is acceptable noise for our ears. To give you an idea, I skipped some uh, noise levels and just showed you uh, the, at the bottom at 140 is siren, which everyone knows is very noisy and can be harmful to our ears if prolonged. There are apps to help measure the decibels, but by using a reference chart, you can have an estimate how many decibels the noise do you hear. Trivia. In our Zoom meetings, there's always dog barking and rooster crow crowing. You find it irritable, right? So it must be more than 80 decibels, the comfortable, it's something the ear can tolerate. So studies state that dog barking and rooster crowing can reach up to 90 decibels. The smell, we don't want foul smell. Of course, a very strong fragrance is foul also, it's considered foul on our, so it depends on the person, but this is the basic criteria. A foul smell can be distracting or irritating, affecting our mental health focus. Finally, an extra point, which is given for plant provision. One of the good thing about plants is the oxygen that it provides. We learned this in our primary school and help us remind about our natural environment and its benefits. Note that not all plants 
drive in indoors without sunlight. So this photo is just for representation. And that's it. The 17 criteria to check accessibility level for ICT employment to workspace design. On a scale of 1 to 100, have you thought about how your workspace score? So take a quick assumption. So would you like to share? So on a scale of 1 to 100, how do you think your workspace fair? How do you think your workspace fair, Resi, on a scale of one to one hundred? Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't have any plants because I live in a condo. So. <laughs> and mm -hmm. on a scale of one to one hundred, what? How do you think your workspace fair? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I would be. 70. It, ma uh, it makes me happy to work in my work work table, workspace, yeah, there, in my area. It has become a safe space for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So thank you for sharing. I hope others uh, had an idea like how others are being conscious about their workspace. Hold on a minute. Okay, and we're back. So to our next section. The point system. Looking at the checklist, each featured scope is divided into four categories and is assigned to a point system. In this case, the score is black and white, meaning it, it is either yes or no. A yes corresponds to a point assigned in this form. For example, on the first row, it's points it's 10 points. So if it's a yes, it's 10. If it's no, it's zero. If there is a column on the right, to no there's also a column on the right to note the actual points, how you pair, and a recommendation to reconfigure or add the feature. The first three categories, surfaces, work tools, and environment is assigned points that total to 100 points to signify accessibility in ICT employment in relation to workspace design. The last category is for additional points, but not necessarily because it may not apply, but having it is a plus in relation to mental health for workspace. To help you picture how this audit form works, I have here four hypothetical cases. So this is the actual points, the recommendation, and here is the four hypothetical cases. Case one. Most of us would think, okay, I want to go, go into ICT employment. So you would need a computer and an internet, right? Okay, so case one is having only two features, which is a computer and an internet connection for a total of 20 points. So if we look at the rating, how many is the 20 points? Which, how many stars? Would you like to answer? How about you, Peggy? Uh, 20 points. So how many stars? 20 points for, uh, for my workspace. Uh, for, this, uh, for this case, it's 20 points, but how many stars is it equivalent to? Uh, two, uh, uh, one, two, one star, one star. One star, thank you. So it's one star. So thus one is able to access ICT employment in relation to workplace, but not necessarily having a comfort level good for mental health. So this is just one star. One may 
One may have the tools but lack dedicated surfaces like chairs and desks. In this case, we can think of people who work on their bed, still have to think about transferring location, and need added mental thinking. Think of it as having an appliance in your kitchen without dedicated surface for appliances, okay? So we have case number two. The we have the chair and the desk, computer and the internet connection. So it is 40 points. So in this chart, it is two stars. Looking at the rating, we can, we can uh, deduce that, oh, maybe I can stay and work in this place, but misses out on a good environmental feature. It can be, okay, it's workable, but it's noisy, it's smelly, it's lack of good lighting and temperature, maybe too cold or too hot. Okay, so for the next two cases, I hope, I hope this gives you an understanding of the basic form. So for the next two cases, we assume a scenario that addresses the feature and criteria in sample photos. So here on the left, we have the case three and here on the right, we have the case four. Case three is a workstation garnering five stars and case four is a workstation garnering four stars. Both cases have high scores in the audit form. If you remember our review of related literature on environmental comfort level on workspace quality as a guide, the bottom level is discomfort, goes up to physical comfort, then functional comfort, then psychological comfort. In these two cases, let's add the concern about mental health. So this is the added scenario or detail of the scenarios. Case three is more productive and happy than case four. So what is the most noticeable difference in these two photos? So anyone would like to answer? Justin or Peggy, Peggy would like to answer? A clutter. Uh, yes, the clutter. So the most noticeable difference is clutter. If you meet the criteria of the audit form, but case four has, it, both of them meets the criteria of the audit form, but the case four has more elements added, which is the clutter. So in summary and conclusion, as the audit form works as a baseline for the level of access in ICT employment, both persons in the case three and four have good access for ICT employment, but not necessarily in good mental health condition. The former has a neat workplace, and while the latter has an added clutter in the workspace. We are using this form to input features and criteria as a baseline for workspace configuration if one is interested to improve workspace quality and mental health for ICT employment. This lets you understand the limitation of the audit form as a baseline for levels of accessibility and ICT employment. Not necessarily the workspace quality that can further improve mental health. Beyond the list, it could be a risk for clutter. So having too little is not good and having too much is not good also. A balance is preferred. This exercise helps us understand the environmental comfort model of workspace quality also from physical comfort to psychological comfort. Sometimes our comfort or our discomfort is rooted from lack of minimal features, while on the other side, it is lack of organization for extra features, sometimes unnecessary features. This also made us realize that workstation design would take more work and time. Seek professional advice and benefits would, would benefit us in resolving the issue. In our position of the course, we support our profession as architects and encourage people who need the services. So this is the summary. So using the audit form, we configure the workspace, improve the quality, health, and access to employment. So for the basic audit, we envision even regular citizens with enough knowledge about the form will be able to use it. So it helps them be self-aware how much to improve on these 17 criteria.
else seek a professional help for more development get an architect for those who need to be served get assistance from professionals okay so that's it it again uh, this is architects for accessibility uh, this is our group and it's now open for questions All right, we have some questions, um, clarifications. Okay, I think if not, um, okay, so we have we have a question um, from architect Edis. Uh, is there like a passing star rate to assess the effectiveness of the workspace? So our so our audit form is uh, the effectivity to access ICT employment. So you are able to work. So in those three stars, we have the the middle one. Three stars is the satisfactory level. Of course, if you want to be uh, comfortable including psychological comfort is you get the five stars. So I hope that answers the question. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Architect Abby. So how many minutes do we still have left? Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. I hope you learned something today. Oh, I was informed that there's 10 minutes. Anyone would have a question? Do you think that you are able to understand the audit form well and will be able to apply them to your workspace immediately? So maybe we can have a feedback from one of the guests. How about... Um, we have friends of AFA. Uh, Mr. Krista Wong, would you like to share? Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, okay. thank you. Hello, good evening. Thank you for that wonderful talk, actually. And I'm just contemplating on how will you apply this on actually on virtual environment, especially on virtual offices wherein most of us are working either on skeleton or we're working on a yeah, on a work from home. So how can we apply this uh, assessment that you, you were talking about? And thanks for, yeah, that's my question. Okay, so um, the limitation of this audit form is it does not, uh, it does not include the accessibility features for digital tools. Uh, if you are looking for like the live captions or the, um, magnifier tool in a digital setting like virtual we don't uh, that is a limitation of the audit form um, what we are focused on is the workspace the physical workspace so we have three categories the surface the tools the hardware tools and the environment so you can already immediately use it. For example, you only have limited space and you only have, like the case two, you only have the chair, the desk, and the computer and an internet. So you that alone gives you a rating of level two, meaning you are able to work in an ICT uh, employment. So, but, it is not really ideal, uh, not, not really a high level of comfort 
but you are able to access. So it is an access for ICT employment, focusing on the physical workspace. So, yes. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. I hope it answered. I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. It answers. Yeah. Thank you. Hold on. Uh, let, let me. Uh, all right, so we are uh, we are ending this uh, talk. Thank you very much for participating. We are going to open a platform soon. Stay tuned to Architects for Accessibility Facebook page. So we will release the audit form and everyone is able to download. So thank you very much. Uh, may I just request everyone to open their screen? Yeah. And let's just take a group photo. Okay, so. Okay, okay so, so we're taking the group photo. Thank you, one, two, three. Everyone, can you say it with me? On the count of three, say you get an architect. Okay, so one, two, three. Open your mics, please. Okay, one, two, three. Get an architect. Woo. Yay! <laughs>